Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about an unusual discovery that was just made by scientists after 32 years. There was a star that was missing for 32 years since 1987, we didn't know what happened to it and we finally found it again. Let's talk a little bit more about why this is important and welcome to What The Man. So, back in 1987, our understanding of the universe, the space, and the way things work in space changed quite dramatically because of one single event, a very important event. For the first time in modern history, in a nearby galaxy that you can see right here, this is the representation of Large Magellanic Cloud, we've witnessed the first ever actual supernova happening in front of our eyes. This was the so-called 1987 supernova that allowed us to not just see this, of course, but to study it in a lot of detail. The Large Magellanic Cloud, where the supernova occurred, is only about 160,000 light years away from us, it's right there. And inside of this galaxy, there's actually quite a lot of activity, and so a supernova was sort of expected, but not within our lifetime. And we got really lucky that we were able to observe it in a lot of detail, and it helped us understand and also confirm a lot of theories and a lot of assumptions we had about everything. Things like black holes, things like neutron stars, and of course, um, a lot of other ideas that today we kind of take for granted. This supernova literally transformed the entire understanding of universe and of cosmos that we had back then. In the image taken by the Hubble telescope, this is what it looked like. It was a very, very bright star that suddenly appeared out of nowhere. Although technically, there was a star there as well. And this star was a large but also somewhat old blue giant that, first of all, we never actually expected to go supernova. So there's something that surprised us right there. We've learned that blue supergiant stars can create powerful supernova. And following the explosion, it left this beautiful formation that you see on the screen. If we were to zoom in here, as Hubble did for many years and took a picture of this pretty much every year, this is what you'd see. This is over the period of several years and more specifically over a decade. Here's another way of looking at this and how um, the actual supernova transformed over time. Now, so okay, this is great, we've learned so much about this, we've seen this and we've witnessed the supernova in real time, but what exactly is that missing star? Well. Following the supernova, we actually could not see any remnants. We've looked pretty much everywhere inside the supernova behind the gas that was left here, and we couldn't see anything. And we expected to find something. Possibly an active black hole, possibly a bright neutron star, something. But the thing is, it seems like it just disappeared. And for the uh, past 32 years, scientists have been actively looking inside the supernova, looking through all of this gas in their attempt to basically find this, find the missing star. And we expect all of the nebula that are left by supernova to have some kind of a remnant. Like for example, this is the Crab Nebula. And if we try to pierce through all of this nebulous clouds, we'll actually find the very famous Crab Pulsar that um, is essentially a neutron star that was quite thoroughly studied in the last few decades. However, not supernova known as SN 1987. Why was there nothing left here? And for the longest time, scientists made a lot of different assumptions. Maybe it turned into a black hole. Maybe all of this gas fell back into the remnant that was there. For example, maybe there was a neutron star, but the gas then made it turn into a black hole that disappeared from the view. Or more exotically, some scientists even thought that maybe it actually became a kind of a different type of an object. Like, for example, an object known as a quark star, which is a hypothetical object that we've never seen, but we do believe it exists theoretically. And a quark star would be an object made out of not uh, typical matter, so not of the actual neutrons, for example, like a neutron star, but out of quarks, the subatomic particles that um, are even more mysterious than neutrons that pulsars and neutron stars are made out of. So in that sense, a lot of new ideas were formed and we were trying to explain why nothing was observed. Until today. The paper that was just released a few weeks ago thoroughly investigated the remnant of the supernova and found out at least one area in there where it seemed that something massive and powerful but really small in size was hiding behind all of this dust. 
sort of resembling what you see on the screen here. That something, according to these scientists, was the missing neutron star. And there is no other explanation for what we're observing, because something in the dust cloud is releasing a lot of energy, something that can only be a massive compact object. And that something could be nothing else but a compact star. Now, we don't really see the star itself just yet, but what we're seeing is essentially a much warmer region of gas that seems to be um, moved around and heated up by something in the middle. And although technically it could be anything, like for example, maybe it's a very large massive planet or some sort of a star in there as well, the chance of that object being anything but a neutron star is very low. So in that sense, what we're actually observing are the effects of the missing star that we've been looking for for the past 32 years. Although technically, even though I keep calling it a star, it's a remnant. It's a neutron star. It's an object that used to be a star, exploded, and now became what's known as a, a compact remnant. And a typical pulsar or a typical neutron star that this uh, supernova created is usually around maybe 10 or so kilometers in diameter, creating this very powerful, very massive object that's just one step away from becoming a black hole. Now, unfortunately, these rings that you see here, the beautiful formations that were created by the supernova, are not going to stay with us that long. We believe that most of them will probably disappear within the next 10 to maybe 20 years. And even though currently the gas here moves really fast at speeds of about 3000 to 5000 kilometers per second, eventually all of this will transform into a more diffuse cloud that's going to look entirely different and will very likely teach us a little bit more about the evolution of supernova. At the same time, when the supernova occurred, there were a lot of other things we've learned um, right before it happened. Like for example, today we know that a neutrino burst or an active burst of neutrinos suddenly appearing and bombarding our planet is a telltale sign that a supernova is about to be witnessed. And so now we know that whenever we actually see a sudden neutrino burst, something really energetic is about to happen. Also, once the thick cloud surrounding the neutron star disappears in the next 10 to possibly 20 years, we'll finally be able to actually see it and for the first time ever study the neutron star 40 or possibly 50 years after it was created. This is definitely the youngest, closest neutron star to us, and so it's going to be really exciting to see what's really happening right there in the middle. Although hopefully by then we're still able to study the night skies because with the advent of modern satellites, it's becoming more and more difficult for scientists to see things in, for example, radio waves. Mostly because of the amount of satellites orbiting our planet, which you can sort of see in this simulation, and because of the amount of stuff orbiting, it's becoming more and more difficult to observe and study the night skies. So it's quite possible that by the time that the dust cloud disappears in early 2030s or possibly 2040s, the night skies might be filled with a lot more satellites than there are today. But either way, it's going to be really exciting to find out what we're going to be able to see here in the next 10 or so years as the dust slowly disappears and as the neutron star becomes more and more apparent. If we learn something else incredible and amazing about the uh, former star known as Sandulag, now known as SN1987A, I'm definitely going to come back and talk a little bit more about this. But until then, that's really it. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. And maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.